Hello and welcome to Three Wide. This week, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series is at Pocono Raceway for the Pocono 400. I feel like this race was really hit or miss. I feel like overall it was a decent race as we got to see the top three guys from this season of Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, and Martin Truex Jr. duke it out and then Kyle Larson showing up later in the race. But it just seemed weird as we got later in this race as the leader just ran away, unlike in the beginning where Ryan Blaney was passed by Kevin Harvick and that would have been the end of Blaney's day, or how Martin Truex Jr. got to the lead to win stage one, but as this race went along, it didn't seem like there were many passes for the lead, as it was just a track position battle to get that clean air and then run away from it. This led to Martin Truex Jr. getting his second win of the year after Auto Club earlier this season. After showing, I believe he had the best car all day, if you just watched the race, he passed the most cars, unlike Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch, who were the other two top contenders, who seemed once they got in traffic, they just couldn't make any moves. So now, on to my three-day review of my weekend at the Pocono Raceway, starting with Friday. So we start things off with the first thing I saw there on Friday which was qualifying before the ARCA race. In qualifying we saw some of the bigger contenders such as Eric Almirola and Chase Elliott looked like they were going to have problems getting in. Eric Almirola as it was later reported had a very bad vibration which then ended up having him start way back in the field. But then Chase Elliott ended up bumping his way in to the next round of qualifying. As qualifying went along with the first two rounds it looked like it was going to be more of the same with, with Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick being the two top cars. But then in the third round there was a bright neon hope as Ryan Blaney must have saved some of his car, just got lucky, and got the pole for the race, which set off one of the biggest cheers I heard all weekend when Blaney was ran across that line to get the pole. Now we were all thinking if he could relay this into a repeat like he did last year at Pocono. This then led into the Arca race, which was being threatened by rain, potentially shortening the event. As the race started with Truck Series competitor Noah Gregson on the pole along with the return of Brendan Poole to the ARCA Racing Series, as he was going to be the relief driver for Natalie Decker, who had a hernia surgery earlier in the week. This then led to the green flag, where everyone took the green flag, and Natalie Decker drove the car down pit road to get the driver change done on lap one. And then a caution flew out, and looked like the 25 car wouldn't go a lap down for its driver change, but it took too long to get the car rolling, and the 25 was a lap down and would not get the free pass. This race seemed like if you restarted on the top, that you would not get a good start, as the top line didn't really hold form, and the bottom just go flying by everyone. This then set Brandon Poole off to have one of the more crazy days where it seems like he passed about every car on the track after he got his free pass from the caution later in the race. This race ended with Harrison Burton, son of Jeff, getting a win at Pocono, and it seems like he was going to set what was going to be the theme for the weekend, with whoever got the lead just getting the clean air and running away, as throughout this race it didn't seem like the leader would run away too far until he got it late in the race. <laughs> And another theme of the weekend where rain was supposedly going to be threatening this race didn't show up and it looked like that would be the theme throughout the whole weekend as rain was a threat from Friday to Monday. This leads to Saturday with Monster Energy final practice and the Xfinity race with this great new package we all thought that would produce great racing. Nothing crazy happened in final practice so on to the Xfinity race. Going into the Xfinity race with this new package, I thought it'd be more of a slingshot race, not a pack race like we saw at the All-Star race, which everyone thought this could be, considering it's the same package. But this race looked like the same old Pocono for the Cup Series guys, though, where the leader just got in front and just ran away, and the only way you'd catch him is by pitch strategy, which Cole Custer did. I felt like going into this race that this package wasn't going to work after my All-Star review, which you can watch back, where I didn't think this package would work at Pocono considering it's a single groove racetrack. But I feel like this race race opened eyes to more people who thought this package could maybe work everywhere. I feel like taking the restrictor plates off of these cars with this current package that they were using would make a huge difference at tracks like Pocono. I feel like this package is more set up for tracks where you could hold it wide open the entire time, which Pocono is not, considering turn one with the huge banking and making it a real narrow groove you'll have to lift. It will probably still work at Indy, and I think it will work pretty good at Michigan. But my thing going into this Michigan race this Saturday is I feel like there's a real big possibility that we could just be in for the same exact race that we saw at Pocono. I feel like the multi-grooves at Charlotte made this package work really well, 
and that Michigan, it really hasn't been a multi-groove racetrack since the repave. So I think NASCAR needs to get back to the drawing board to see what they can do and hope that the next generation of cars for the Cup Series and the Xfinity Series will make overall just better racing everywhere and we won't have to implement packages throughout the year at the all-star race and go oh this will work and make the racing better and then when a race like this at Pocono happens we go oh what, what do we do now so this race ended with Kyle Busch getting a win surprise surprise but then later it came out that his car failed post-race inspection which brings up a whole separate problem to where if this car just fails inspection who really cares for them it's not like Kyle Busch is running for the championship this just hurts the Xfinity regulars and I feel like NASCAR needs to figure out a way that if you get penalized and you're a cup guy in the Xfinity series that it should help the guys that were illegal from the, the Xfinity side and hurt the cup guys now on to Sunday with the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series for the Pocono 400. This race had a couple of decent storylines I think going into it such as who would win between the 18 and the 4, can Ryan Blaney spoil the party and repeat at Pocono, or could someone else maybe shock the world and get a win potential with rain on the way. This race was a complete opposite in terms of temperatures. They've been practicing in the warm sun for most of the weekend where it would be 75 plus degrees but then on Sunday the temperatures were in the mid to lower 60s and there was a crazy wind gust. This race started with Ryan Blaney on the pole and he would lead for a couple laps and then Kevin Harvick passed him to then take over the lead. Then Martin Truex would take the lead and win stage one. But then after stage one during the pit stops, Martin Truex Jr.'s team hit the jack which made the pit stop go long and he would restart in 14th. So Kevin Harvick wins stage two and then I feel like during that stage is when Martin Truex Jr. really showed how strong his car was when he went all the way from 14th to 5th to set up for the third stage. This led to the final stages duking of the battle between three cars of Martin Truex Jr., Kevin Harvick, and Kyle Busch. But then the caution came out late in the race, which then led to pit stops potentially changing this race. Where Kyle Busch, I believe, had flashbacks to last year's first race where he didn't pit and lost the race. He came in and four cars stayed out, which were Kevin Harvick, Martin Truex Jr., Kyle Larson, and Chase Elliott. Staying out ended paying off for Truex and Larson, and a little bit for Harvick, but not as much. Kyle Busch restarted in the 8th position behind a couple guys who got two tires, and all the guys who stayed out. This then led to another caution after Martin Truex Jr. looked like he was royal on his way to winning the race. And this had me thinking in person that Kyle Busch is going to get this win, considering he was going to start 3rd and had probably 20 plus laps better tires than Truex and Larson. But that did not come to fruition for Busch as Truex and Larson just ran away and Truex gets his win at Pocono. Overall, I feel like this was one of the better Pocono races. Yes, there wasn't a crazy amount of lead changes, but I felt like there was more battles throughout the field than there's been in the past at Pocono. I feel like Pocono has its hits and its misses throughout the history recently there, where we've had really hot track conditions and a good race, but we've also had really hot track conditions and a bad race. We've had cold conditions and a bad race, and we've had cold conditions and a good race. The thing that really stuck out to me was how Kai's just couldn't pass going into the corner unless it was a slingshot into the beginning of the turn. The thing that was very apparent to me was if three cars were running identically apart and then that third guy would just pull the second car in just a little bit, all of a sudden that first guy would just fly away and you'd never see him again. Overall, I enjoyed this Pocono race in person considering I got to watch the battles throughout the field and wasn't focused on what TV made me watch probably, which was the front. But I feel like there's going to be steps needed to get this race to be better in the future. Now what to look ahead to this weekend at Michigan International Speedway for the Firekeepers Casino 400. Number 1. Larson going for 4 in a row. The past three times we've been at Michigan, Kyle Larson's been the guy to end up in victory lane. Now we'll see this weekend if Larson can keep up his dominance at the track and get the new Chevy Camaro their first non-restrictor plate win of the season and continue his dominance at the track in Michigan. Number two, MTJ starts a streak of his own. The top two cars this season to pretty much everyone in NASCAR have been Kevin Harvick and Kyle Busch, but now the third car of Martin Truex Jr. is starting to show some of his strength. Harvick and Busch all have streak wins this season, but Truex only had the one win at Auto Club before winning last weekend at Pocono. Now we'll see if Truex can start his Bush slash Harvick as streak and potentially build considering he won at Auto Club which is the other two mile track on the schedule and many people compare it to Michigan. And we'll see if the champ can respond to the other two and show that you're going to have to beat last year's champ to become this year's champion. And number three, Hendrick Motorsports wins. If we look at Hendrick Motorsports' current crop of drivers, they've all come close to wins at Michigan in other series and in the Cup Series. Alex Bowman was running really well when he was in the 88 car the last time at Michigan where he was running in the top five but then had problems which led to him getting a very bad finish. If we look at last year's Xfinity race 
William Byron lost to Denny Hamlin by mere inches and could have got a win at Michigan. Jimmy Johnson has won at Michigan in the past and usually is a contender pretty much everywhere we go. But this year it's been completely different. But we'll see since considering Hendrick and all the Chevys have been looking making steps that he can maybe bounce back in Michigan this weekend. And then there's Chase Elliott. The past four times that the Cup Series has gone to Michigan, Chase Elliott's finished second, 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 and eighth. And if we just look back to how Kyle Larson started his dominance at this track, he was three years into it and got his first win here. Now we'll see if Chase Elliott can do it and start and build his momentum to what people thought he could be when he took the 24 car over from Jeff Gordon. So that'll do it for 3 Wide this week. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below and thanks for watching.